To access the written PDF version of this pattern, use the link on screen now in the description below or by going to clubcrochet.com slash bellbag. Hey there, it's Louie. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to crochet a giant bell bag that you can use as a project bag for your crochet, as a pillow, or um, I'm using this one as a stuffing bag so that I can use it for my Amy Gurumi. Really quick before I get started, this pattern is actually not originally designed by myself. It's designed by another Amy Groomy artist that goes by Sir Pearl Gray. Um, you can find more of his work at his website, sirpearlgray.com. He does a lot of Amy Groomy pieces. Uh, and actually, we did a few collaborations this month uh, around the theme of Animal Crossing. He also designed this little Gulliver pattern that we have a tutorial for. And I designed a little miniature bell bag uh, to go with little Gulliver here. You can find all of our Amy Gurumi collaboration Animal Crossing patterns by going to clubcrochet.com slash Animal Crossing. We even have another collaboration coming up in the future for, uh, well, I'll keep it a secret for now. For this pattern, you're going to need the following materials. You'll need three different colors of yarn, gold for the main part of the bag, red for the cord, and brown for the star. For this size bag, I used worsted weight cotton yarn uh, in 100% cotton and a size G 4 millimeter crochet hook. But in this video, I'm actually going to be using a different type of yarn and a different size crochet hook. Let me show you the exact kind of yarn I'll be using. I'm using this Lion Brand Colored Made Easy Yarn, which is labeled as a bulky yarn. Um, so you can see it's a little bit thicker. We should end up with a somewhat larger bell bag. I'm going to guess it'll be about this big, so pretty significantly larger. And because I'm using larger yarn, I'm using a size J six millimeter crochet hook. You don't need all the yarn to be the exact same type, um, just a relatively similar size. Let me show you because I'm going to be using two different kinds of yarn for this. For the um, the star, I'll be using this yarn, which is Bernat Softy Chunky, and you can see they are relatively the same size yarn. Um, you don't need them to be the exact same, but being close is probably a good idea. Okay, well, without further ado, let's get hooking. We're actually going to start by making this star. Okay, so for our star, we're going to be using our brown yarn here, and we're going to start with a magic loop. Now, my method for making a magic loop is I take my palm, open up, and I take the yarn and wrap it around my index finger three times. So one, two, and three. Let's give a little bit of an extra end there. And we're going to take that tail and place it between the middle and ring finger. And we're going to close our palm like that to make a little finger gun. Now we can take our crochet hook and go under the first two loops on our finger right here. So just go under one and then under two. Now we can yarn over with that third loop right here that's attached to the yarn. And we're going to pull it under the first two loops on our finger and then yarn over with that same end and pull it through the loop we just made to create a chain. And that will lock our yarn into place and we can pull it off of our finger. For round one, we are going to work 10 single crochets into the center of this hole and then we're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet that we made. For our single crochets, we're going to take our crochet hook, go into the magic loop, into the center of the hole, then yarn over with the end that's attached to the yarn right here, pull that under the loop, then yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook to finish a single crochet. We want to make 10 of those. So there's one. Let's do a second one. Go into the center, pull a loop through, yarn over, pull through two. There's two. There's three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now we can pull our loop out a little bit so we can get our crochet hook out of there and we can uh, close this loop. To close this magic loop, um, there's a few different ways you can do it, but I'll go through the main way. So we're going to pull this tail end, which is going to tighten one of these two, uh, these two strands right here. 
make sure to keep track of which one it pulls in. I believe it's going to pull in this middle, this inside one. Do not pull it tight enough so that this goes pulled all the way closed. We just want to keep track of which one it is attached to. So we're going to pull it very slightly. Yes, okay, so it's pulling this center one just a little bit. It'll probably be the center loop. Now, whichever one it's pulling tightly, you want to grab a hold of that one. So we're going to grab a hold of that strand from the center right here. And we're going to pull that from the base of your crochet, not from where your loop is coming out, but from the base of where you started. And that's going to tighten the second loop. So we're going to pull that tight until that second loop is as tight as we want it. There we go. So it'll close the hole. And then we can pull this tail end, which will pull tight our second loop. So we're going to pull our tail end here. And again, you want to pull it from the base there. There we go. And that's going to close up our magic loop. We can pull it a little bit tighter. There we go. Okay, now we can get our crochet hook back in here. To finish up round one, we want to slip stitch into the first single crochet that we made. Now, to find our first single crochet that we made, a great way is to count backwards. We made 10 single crochets, so we should be the 10th one away from our where our loop is coming out here. So we count back, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. You can see it's right there. Let me get a needle so you can see where exactly where it is. So it's going to be these two loops right there. It's kind of hard to see because of the yarn that I'm using, but you want to go under these two loops. Get our crochet hook, pull our loop tighter, and into that those two loops right here, first single crochet that we made, we want to do one slip stitch. So we yarn over, pull through, and then pull through the loop on the hook to make a slip stitch. There we go, and that'll be the end of round one. For round two, we are going to chain two, yarn over and pull through, and yarn over and pull through again. And then working into the same place that we made our first slip, our, our slip stitch in the end of round one, we want to half double crochet once. So we're going to yarn over, go into that same place that we did our slip stitch right here, then yarn over again and pull through, yarn over a third time and pull through all three loops on this hook to make a half double crochet. Okay, so now we got our chains and our half double crochet. Now into the next nine spots, we want to do a half double crochet increase. Okay, so that means that we're going to do two half double crochets into each of the remaining stitches. So we're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, which is right here. You can see if you pull it a little bit, you can see that little hole there. That's where our previous half double crochet went. So we don't want to go into that one. We want to go into the next one right here. We're going to go in there, do a half double crochet, so yarn over and pull through, then yarn over, pull through all three loops. And we're going to do that twice into the same spot. So we're going to yarn over, go into the same stitch, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through three. Okay, so we're going to do that half double crochet increase into the remaining stitches around. Yarn over, into the next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And then we're going to do that into the same stitch. There's our second increase. And that first chain two from the beginning of the round, we're actually going to count as a stitch. There's our third increase. Fourth increase. Fifth increase, a little bit more yarn. Okay. And now let's count around. At the end of this round, we're going to have 20 stitches. So if we count around, Count this first chain right here as your first um, stitch. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we need four more. Yarn over, go into the next stitch right here. And you'll see that there's going to be one extra place 
which is going to be our slip stitch. Okay, so we got one more half double crochet increase right here. One and two. Now you should have 20 stitches around, including this first chain. Now into the first chain that we made, we want a slip stitch to join. Just slip stitch one into that first chain. And that'll join our circle a little bit. Okay, so now we have our round two finished. Okay, so for round three, we're going to chain one. And working into the same place that you slip stitch from the previous round, we're going to work a single crochet and a half double crochet. So we're going to go into that same chain right here, yarn over and pull through, then yarn over and pull through two for our single crochet. And we're also going to do a half double crochet. So we're going to yarn over, go into that same space, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops to make a half double crochet. Now into the next stitch right here, we're going to do a trip, uh, double crochet and a triple crochet. So for a double crochet, we're going to yarn over, go into that next stitch right there, yarn over again and pull through that loop, yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook, then yarn over again and pull through the final two loops on the hook for a double crochet. And now we're going to work a triple crochet into that same place. So we're gonna yarn over twice, so one and two, Go into that same stitch again, yarn over and pull through, then yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook, yarn over again, pull through another two loops on the hook, then finally yarn over and pull through the final two loops on the hook. Okay, so again we did a single and a half into the same place that we slip stitched, a double and a triple into the next stitch. Now into this next stitch right here, we're going to do a triple and a double. So see how we're going up and then back down to make the edges of the star. So next, we're going to do a triple and a double into the next stitch. So we're going to yarn over twice, one and two. Go into the next stitch right here. Yarn over again and pull through. Yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook. Yarn over again, pull through another two loops on the hook. Then finally yarn over and pull through the final two loops on the hook here. That's for your triple crochet. Now a double crochet into the same place. We're going to yarn over, go into the same stitch, yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook, then yarn over and pull through another two loops on the hook. Now we're going to do a half double crochet and a single crochet into the next stitch. See how we're working back down. So we're going to do a half double crochet. So we're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch right here. Oops. Make sure to get under both of those loops, not just one of them. Yarn over again and pull through. Then yarn over and pull through all three loops for your half double crochet. Then into that same exact stitch, we're going to do a single crochet. Let's get a little bit more yarn here. So we're going to go into that same stitch, yarn over and pull through. Then yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, so you can kind of see the pattern here. That's going to be for one of the edges of the star. We're going to be doing this five times. So let's go through this repeat again. We're going to be repeating this um, uh, four more times to get to the end of the round. So the repeat is we're going to into the next stitch. We're going to do a single crochet and a half double crochet. Okay, those are both worked in the same stitch. Then a double crochet and a triple crochet. Yarn over into the next stitch. Through, pull through two, and pull through two. Oops. For our double, then our triple, yarn over twice into the same stitch. Pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. And then we're going to work back down. Do a triple crochet and a double crochet. Yarn over twice into the next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two for a triple crochet, and then a double crochet into that same stitch, yarn over, into the same stitch, pull through, pull through two, and pull through two for a double crochet. Let's get a little bit more yarn. And then into the next stitch, we'll do a half double crochet, and a single crochet. Okay, so you kind of see the repeat here. Now we have the bottom of our star made right there. And we're going to repeat that 
um, for three more times. Okay, so you want to have five points total. These, this is the point between the two double crochet or two triple crochets. That's going to be the point. There's another point. Okay, so let's do that repeat again. Single crochet and half double crochet into the same stitch. Then double crochet and triple crochet, yarn over twice. two, and three, and then back down, triple crochet and double crochet into the next stitch, and double crochet, then into the next stitch, half double crochet and a single crochet. And you'll see my star's kind of getting a little weird and floppy. Don't worry about that. It's all going to be straightened out once you um, sew it onto your bell bag. And you can kind of see how big, how much bigger this bell bag is going to be than the previous bell bag. Let's finish this star and we'll compare the two. Okay, so um, we have two more of these repeats to do. Let's do our, our next repeat, single crochet and a half double crochet and then a double crochet and a triple crochet. Okay, then a triple and a double. There's our triple. There's our double. Let's go a little more yarn. Then our half double crochet and single crochet. Okay. And now we have one more of these repeats to do. A single crochet and a half double crochet. A double crochet and a triple crochet. There's our double, there's our triple, oopsies. Let's try our triple one more time. I lost the yarn there. One, two, and three. Then a triple and a double. One, two, and three for a triple. And then a double. Okay. And then a half double crochet and a single crochet. Half double and a single. To finish this star up, we're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet that we made right here. So just slip stitch one. There we go. And you'll see, see how it's like kind of floppy and weird. Don't worry about that. We'll, we'll figure that out when it, when it gets sewn on. You can just kind of flatten it if you'd like right now like that. Okay, so we're just going to cut the yarn. You want to leave enough of an end here so that you can sew this onto the bag. So, hmm, yeah, that's probably about fine. We'll cut the end. And now we can just pull this all the way through. And we'll use this to sew onto the bag. You can kind of see how big our star is now. Now let's compare this to our finished uh, one in cotton so you can see how much bigger it's going to be. Wow, we're going to get a big bell bag. Oh boy, looks like uh, yeah, about double the size. <laughs> oh boy, this is going to be fun. <laughs> I'm excited. I didn't know how big this was going to be, so um, it's a, kind of exciting here. Now, if you want to, um, you can kind of see how it's hard to tell where the end of this star is. And the, re the way I did that is I took my end of my yarn here and I did a hidden end for the next stitch. So let me just show you how to do that really quick. We're gonna yarn, uh, thread our yarn on our needle and we're going to go into the back of the next uh, stitch. So this is where we made our slip stitch to connect. We wanna go into the back right here of the next stitch. We're going to basically replicate this so that we can hide this end really well. So we're going to go into the back of that next stitch. Don't pull it too tight. 
And now we're going to go into where this end is coming out, right into that end right here. And we're just going to hide our end a little bit into the back, just like, eh, let's go like that. And pull that through. Should pull that tighter first. There we go. And you see it kind of replicates that end. It's harder to tell where the star is finished now. And we'll still use this to sew onto the bag. Okay, so we can place this to the side and we'll come back to it a little bit later. Okay, so for our main bell bag, we're going to, going to be using our gold yarn here. And we're going to start with a magic loop. I'm hoping that this whole bell bag will fit into the screen here because I'm kind of worried that we're going to get too big. So I'm not going to go through the details of how to do a magic loop again since I just did that in our previous part. I'll just do it relatively quick here. If you want to go through a video where I'm going through details of how to do magic loop a little bit more detailed, go to clubcrochet.com slash magic loop. Okay, so for round one of the bag, we're going to be single crocheting eight times into the magic loop. Okay, so just eight single crochets. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now we can close our magic loop a little bit. There we go. And that's going to be the end of round one for the bell bag. You can see it's going to be a little bit smaller. This bulky yarn is not as big as I was expecting. All right. So for round two, we're going to be increasing into each stitch around, which will bring us up from eight stitches to 16. For an increase, we're just going to be doing two single crochets into the same stitch. We'll start with our first single crochet that we made right here. And we're just going to do a single crochet into that stitch. There's one single crochet. And we're going to do a second single crochet into that exact same stitch right here. Okay, so there's two. There's our first increase. We'll be doing an increase like that all the way around. So let's do into our next stitch right here. Two single crochets for an increase. There's our second increase. We're going to have eight increases total. Here's our third increase. And with, with eight increases, we should have 16 stitches around by the end of this round. Let's get to the end of the round. We'll count back, and make sure that we got it. And here's our last increase. Okay, now let's count back, make sure that we got our, um, our 16 stitches. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Our 16th is gonna be right there. Now, the rest of this bell bag is going to be worked in the round, so we don't need to uh, turn for this entire piece, just like the star. And we're going to actually cut this tail end, keeping it relatively small. And now let's get an extra thread of yarn so we can keep track of where the end of our uh, rounds are. I'll be using a small bit of our red yarn that we're going to be using for our I cord to mark the end of our rounds. We'll place this in between um, the end of our round two and our beginning of our round three. That way we can keep track of where the end of the rounds are. So we're just going to place it in between the pieces here and we're going to crochet around it um, just to lock it into place. Okay, so now we are on round three. For round three, we're going to be doing one single crochet into the next stitch right here and then an increase into the uh, next stitch. Okay, so a single crochet and then an increase, and we're going to repeat that process um, uh, eight times total. So a single crochet, then an increase into each stitch around. Let's do our second repeat. One single crochet, and then one increase. There we go. And this is going to bring you up from uh, 16 stitches at the end of round three, or round two, to 24 stitches. So by the end of round three here, you should have 24 stitches around.
and you'll start to see the pattern of each of these rounds. We're just going to be slowly increasing up um, each round to get to the size that we want to get to. Okay, just a few more for this round three here. And here is going to be the end. Okay, so that's going to be the end of round three. Now we're going to pull our stitch marker up like this and work around it so that we can keep track of where we're at. Let's pull it a little bit longer so that we don't have this little tail end annoying us. Okay, so for round four, we're going to be single crocheting two and then an increase and repeating that eight times total. So let's do our first uh, our first repeat. We're going to single crochet two. So there's one and two and then an increase. One and two for our increase. And we'll repeat that eight times in a row. So two single crochets and then an increase eight times in a row. So let's do our second repeat. One two, and then an increase. And this is going to bring you up from 24 stitches to 32 stitches. So you should have 32 stitches by the end of this round. Okay, and here is our final increase. And that will be the end of round four. We can pull our stitch marker up like that, work around it. Okay, so for round five, we're going to be increasing up yet again. We'll be doing three single crochets. So there's one, two, and three, and then work an increase, four and a five. And we'll repeat that process of three single crochets and then an increase eight times around again. So that will bring you up from 32 stitches to 40 stitches. So we'll have 40 stitches by the end of uh, round five here. Okay, so three single crochets and then an increase eight times in a row. Okay, so I'm at the end of round five right here. There's our last increase. And now we are on round six. Let's pull our stitch marker up and around so we can keep track. And for round six, we're going to be increasing up yet again. We'll be doing four single crochets and then our increase. So let's do four single crochets. One, two, three. Let's get that tail end out of here. And four and then our increased stitch. Okay, and we'll repeat that process eight times in a row. So four single crochets and then an increase eight times in a row. And this is gonna bring you up from 40 stitches to 48 stitches around. So you should have 48 stitches by the end of round uh, six here. Okay, so here's our second increase. We'll keep just doing this repeat all the way around. Four single crochets, one, two, three, and four, and then our increase. Okay, so we're coming up to the end of round six here. Here's our final increase, one and two. And then we're gonna pull our red yarn up like that to keep track. And we are on round seven. For round seven, we're just going to be doing a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So there's going to be 48 stitches around. So just pretty easy. Let's get that stitch marker out there a little bit and just do a single crochet all the way around. And this is probably a good chance for you to make sure to count your stitches so that you are certain that you have the right amount of stitches around. Okay, so we've got just a last stitch right here, and that's going to be the end of round seven. Let's pull our stitch marker up. For round eight, we're going to be increasing up again. So we're going to single crochet five times and then do an increase. 
So let's do our first repeat. One, two, three, four, and five. Let's get our yarn a little bit. And then we'll work an increase into the next stitch right here. One and a two. And we'll repeat that eight times in a row. So five single crochets and then an increase eight times. And this will bring you up from 48 stitches to 56 st stitches. So you should have 56 stitches by uh, the end of round eight here. So five single crochets and then our increase. One, two, three, four, five, increase. Okay, and here is our final increase. There we go. Now we can pull this red yarn over like that. Get our fuzz out of the way a little bit. <laughs> okay, so for our next round, round nine, we just want to do a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. You should still have 56 stitches around, so just make sure to do a single crochet all the way around and keep track of where how many stitches you have so you can make sure that you are on the right track. Okay, so that is going to be the end of round nine and our single crochets. We can pull our stitch marker up again. Now we are on round 10 and round 10 is actually our final round of increases. Um, so it's we're going to be increasing up again, but one last time. So for round 10, we're going to single crochet six times and then do our increase. So six single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then an increase, seven and an eight. Okay, and that, uh, we're going to repeat that process eight times. So six single crochets and then an increase eight times in a row, which is going to bring you up to your final count of how many stitches will be around, which is going to be 64 stitches around. So by the end of round 10 here, you should have 64 stitches around. And then our increase. So we got six single crochets and then an increase. Okay, so we're just about done. Here's our final increase, one and two. Now we pull our stitch marker up like that. Okay. Now for the next, uh, for rounds 11 through 30, so that is 20 rounds in a row. So 20 more rounds, we're just going to be single crocheting into each stitch around. So 20 rounds of just single crocheting around. Now, the best way I found to keep track of this is to use the stitch marker for the next few rounds, so just like that, and then don't use the stitch marker after it's inside the piece like this. Don't use it for a little bit, and that way it's easiest to count all your, all your rounds. So there's going to be 20 rounds of just single crochets, okay? So let's just work around this tail for our first piece right here for first round. And a, each one of your rounds should have 64 stitches around. So 64 stitches for each of these 20 rounds. So this is what I mean by locking in your yarn for your first round and then pulling it over, working around it for the next round. And this way you can see, you can track back to where your first increase is. Um, by the way, let me show you how you can see your increase stitches. This might help you when you need to count back. Um, if you look here, you have two V's going into the exact same stitch, right? Like that. That means that there is an increase into that stitch. Both of those stitches are worked into the exact same spot. And if you look over here, these are just single crochet stitches. You can see there's just one V going into one place. So you see two V's there, one V there. So these are single crochets and these are increases. If you look back, you can find where all your increases are. But that is a great way to count all the way back to where your um, round 10 is. So this is going to be the end of round 10, and we're going to have 20 rounds. So it's going to be pretty long. And the all these rounds of single crochets are going to pull your piece up. 
you're going to add height to um, the width that you just made. So this is going to be the base of our bag, and then we're going to crochet up, and then we're going to decrease down a little bit. But I'll be back in, uh, in a sec. I'm just going to do our 20 rounds of single crochets, and I'll be back. Okay, so I have finished round 30, and you can see we've got quite, uh, it's like kind of like a basket now. Um, and if you want to know how to count up uh, your rounds, um, here is where our last increase was. I forgot to not um, continue the, the stitch marker as I was going up, so I did for a second. But if you look right here, there's going to be our first single crochet. So here's our first increase um, from round uh, 10. And then you can see round 11 right here. And if you count up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I put another marker so I could keep track. And then 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I've done our 20 rounds of just single crochets. And we are on round 31. So for round 31, we're going to single crochet 14, and then we'll do an invisible decrease. So we'll talk about what an invisible decrease is in just a second. But let's start by single crocheting uh, 14 times. So 14 single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, whoop, there we go, 12, 13, and here is our 14th single crochet. And now you want to do an invisible decrease. So for an invisible decrease, you're going to take your crochet hook and you want to go into just the two front loops. So just this front loop right here. Okay, so if you look at the top, you see this V. Uh, normally we're going under both, but we only want to go under this first one right there. And you want to go under the first front loop of the next two stitches. So there's the first one, and then go around and get into the second one. I find it's easiest to do one at a time here. Once you're under those two front loops, you'll do a single crochet into those front loops. So you'll yarn over, pull through those two front loops, then yarn over again and pull through the two to finish that invisible decrease. So for this round, we're going to do 14 single crochets and then an invisible decrease four times in a row. Okay, so if you will continue this repeat three more times. So there's our first repeat. So let's do our second repeat here and we'll get down. Uh, this is going to bring your crochet down just a little bit. Um, it'll bring you down from 64 stitches to 60 stitches. So you should have 60 stitches by the end of this round. And I kind of lost count already. So one, two, three, four, five. So make sure to keep count. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and here is 14. And then our next invisible decrease. So again, that's the two front loops. So front loop, and then get into the next front loop. Again, it's it's easiest to do one at a time than trying to do both at the same time. And then you do a single crochet once you're into those two front loops for inv invisible decrease. Okay, so I'm going to repeat this two more times, uh, and then we'll get to the end of the round. And again, you should have 60 stitches by the end of uh, this round. Okay, so this is going to be our last invisible decrease, and this is the end of our round right here. I went back and added our stitch marker. I kind of forgot that in the beginning of this round. But you'll see that your last invisible decrease right here, okay, so the two front loops, should go right at the very end of this round. So you'll know that you uh, did it all right. Okay, and that's going to be the end of round 31. For round 32, we're going to be doing uh, making the holes so that you can add your um, your cord that you can tie it closed with. And you can see on the inside here, we got this little invisible decrease right there just to show you. Um, 
yeah, but that's not really relevant, I guess. <laughs> okay, so for round 32, we're going to single crochet four. One, two, three, and four. And then we're going to chain one. So yarn over, chain one. And then we'll skip the next stitch. We'll skip this one right here. And then we'll repeat this process. Okay, so we're going to keep doing these repeats all the way to the end of the round. That's going to be 12 repeats uh, in a row. So let's do our second repeat. So we go four single crochets, chain one, skip a stitch, and then repeat that. So four single crochets, one, two, three, and four, then chain one, and skip a stitch. Okay, so that's going to be our second repeat. Let's do our third. Four single crochets. One, two, three, four. Chain one, skip a stitch, do it again. One, let's get a little bit more yarn. Two, three, four. Chain one, skip a stitch. And we're just going to keep repeating that process all the way until you get to the end of the round. One, two, three, four, chain one, skip a stitch. And continue that repeat. Okay, so here at our end, I've done our four single crochets. Now we can chain one. And we're going to skip our last stitch right there, and then we can continue on in uh, our piece. So let's get our little stitch marker here, we'll pull it up like that. And we're going to kind of work around, actually, you know what, let's not work around our stitch marker, because it's going to be kind of weird since we did our chain one there. Okay, so we're on round 33. So for round 33, we're just going to be single crocheting into each a stitch around but when we get to our chains let me show you so we're just going to be single crocheting into each one so we're skipping our last stitch from round uh, 32 and we're just going to start our single crochets all the way around and when we get to our chains you'll see now there's a couple different ways you can do this you can crochet into the chain itself like that but i find the best way is actually to crochet into the space that is left over so instead going into this hole that we've made and crocheting around this chain like that while you're single crocheting around and there should be 60 stitches around as you go let's get to the next chain here and i'll show you again crocheting into that chain because i find that that opens the hole a little bit more making it easier for us to get our um our cord into See, so we're going to be weaving our cord in and out of these holes at the end to create the drawstring so you can pull it tight. So we're just going to keep crocheting around for um, all 60 stitches into each uh, stitch and into the holes for uh, that you made from round uh, 32. Okay, so we're on our last single crochet into the hole that we made. That's going to, going to be the end of round 33. So for our next seven rounds, 34 to round 40, so that's seven rounds in a row, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. So uh, seven rounds in a row, we're just going to be doing single crochets into each stitch. So single crochets for... Um, seven rounds in a row and there sh there still should just be 60 stitches per round and this is this is just going to create the top of the bell bag um, the frill that's on the top you know at the very top of it okay so this is going to be my last stitch right here and now we can uh, finish this guy up by doing a slip stitch. One slip stitch right there. Then we can cut the yarn. Uh, you don't need to leave 
a very long end here because we're just going to hide the end in. So just about that long's fine. We'll might even cut that even shorter in just a second. And you can just pull that all the way through. Now we're going to do something called the hidden end method. So to do that, we're going to thread this end on a needle, just like so. Um, we actually did this in the star just, just shortly. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into the back of the next stitch right here under both of the loops like that. And you want to pull it somewhat tight, but not too tight just yet because you're going to want to re-enter into where this end is coming out. So like right there, you want to re-enter with your needle and just hide the end in just a few stitches like this. There we go. Whoop, whoop. There we go. Just, just a few. It doesn't need to be too hidden in the end there. Now you can pull the first end a little tighter. You'd want to kind of match the look of these, so don't pull it too tight. And then you can finish up by going like this and see how it makes it so it looks like one of the other ones so you can't really see it. Now you can hide this end in even further if you feel like it, but I think that's probably just fine. Um, we'll pull these stitch markers out in just a second. I want to use them right now because I want to know, uh, I want this to be the back of our, our, um, our bell bag and we want this to be the front. So the l next thing we want to do is we want to sew on a star onto the front right here. And the most important thing is that you want the star to be directly in the center of two of these holes. So mark where two of these holes is, try to find where the front is, and then we want to sew this on right on the front. So right here is probably just about fine. Let's see. We want the star, the tail end of this star, where um, we cut and did the hidden end method. We want that to be the bottom of the star. So we're going to go like this. Like, yeah, about like that looks pretty good. You can pin it down if you feel like it. I might just um, eye it and try to make it work. So first I'm going to sew on this tail end. So this is from the beginning of the star. You can see it right in the back there, right in the center there. That's um, we want to use, we'll double knot it together with this end. So we want to find where we want the center of our star. So let's go like right here is where we want it. And we'll go take our needle and go right where we feel the center is, like that. And this will kind of keep us in place as we sew on the rest of the star. Okay, so now we can thread the other end of the star, of the tail end of the star right here, and we can begin sewing this on. Now the best thing is to use a crimped end needle like this so you don't actually have to go in and out and we want to find where we want it. So hold it into place. And we can just kind of go into a stitch, then out the next stitch, and then out a stitch on the star, like this. And really make sure that you're not sewing together both halves of the, of the bag, you know, so you're not sewing the bag together by accident. And then we'll just keep going around, sewing our star together. And really try to make sure that it looks like a star by making the points of our pieces sewn a little bit further along. So this is where you can actually um, fix any, any um, not mistakes, but fix any uh, parts where you feel the star could have been a little bit more clear. So here we are sewing on the next bit. that. See, so I want this end, this, uh, the, the corner of this star to be a little bit further down. So I'm going to make sure to sew it a little further down as I go. Like this, like that. See how it's just going down a little bit further. Okay. And I'll just keep doing this all the way around so that our star is sewn onto the front of our bag. And again, make sure that the top of your 
star, the top um, point is directly in between the two holes. Okay, so kind of like that. I want it like right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew this all together and I'll be back in just a sec. Okay, so here I am sewing on the last part of our star. You can see I've gotten all the corners sewn down and it's all sewn together. Now on the back, on the inside rather, we want to get um, this end closer to this end so that when we double knot them together, uh, it's not leaving too much of an end here. So you can either just, you can also probably just like hide this end if you wanted to, but I'm going to double knot it just to make it easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sew, hide in this end till it gets close enough like that to the other tail end so that when I double knot it, it's not leaving a big end so that um, whatever I'm keeping in this doesn't get uh, snagged on the sewing together. So we can just double knot it together like that and we can cut it close. There we go. Now we have our star sewn onto the front. Okay, so the last thing that we want to do is we want to add our, um, we want to make our I cord that we're going to be using for the cord to sew, uh, like uh, the, pull, the pull string. Um, so we're going to need our red yarn for that. Okay, so to crochet an I cord, what you do is, it's, they're actually relatively easy to make. Um, we just need our red yarn. We'll make a slip knot. So we'll flip, make a little loop, and then flip that loop on itself like that to make it kind of look like a little pretzel there. And then grab that inside and pull it up. That'll create a knot that you can pull this end and it'll tighten that knot a little bit tighter. So we get our crochet hook in there in that slip knot. And for an I cord, we just simply chain three. So one, two, and three. Okay, now starting into the second chain from the hook, we want to get our crochet hook into that second chain then yarn over and pull a loop through. Then we want to get into the third chain from the hook right here, yarn over and get a another loop through. Now you should have three loops on the hook. See? Now what you need to do is we're going to take our crochet hook out of these first two loops and we're going to pinch them with our index finger and, and thumb. Uh, we don't want them to come loose. That is very, very important. So we're going to take our crochet hook out. This is can be a very delicate um, system. So take it really slowly, especially when you're first starting out. So we're going to take, pinch the bottom of it like that, get our crochet hook out of those first two loops, and we want to pinch those first two loops with your index and middle finger and grab a hold of the yarn with the rest of your fingers. Now we want to yarn over with the end Really make sure you do not let go of these two ends because they will come, the whole thing will come loose. And we want to just chain one through that loop that's on the hook. Now we want to take our crochet hook and insert it into the next loop. Release it from your pinch and get your crochet hook in there. Then yarn over and chain one into that loop. Okay, now into the third one, you can let go, get your crochet hook in there then yarn over and chain one into that third loop. Now you still should have three loops on the hook. And you wanna repeat that process over and over and over again, okay? And it'll make this really long uh, cord that is very flexible that you can use uh, as your drawstring for your bag. So let's do another row of that, okay? So we're going to pinch the bottom two right there, get your crochet hook out, keep it in the, in the last loop though, and really pinch them down, grab your yarn, yarn over and chain one, then let go of the next loop, get your crochet hook into that next loop, yarn over and chain one. Now the last loop right here, get your crochet hook into that last loop, yarn over and chain one. And we'll just keep on doing that. Now, what you want to do is you want to make this um, that for me, I want to do it till it reaches five times the height of this. So 
uh, for example, for my other bag, this smaller one, to make it long enough, I needed to make this um, five times the height of this bag. For me, that was uh, 30 inches long of an I-cord. To make this 30 inches long, I had to do um, 98 rows to reach that length. Uh, so, yeah. So for our example here, here we have a little ruler. Let's find out how long we want to make this. So from the bottom to the top, we have about 10 inches. So we want our I-cord to be about mm, 50 inches long, which is pretty long. Um, it's going to take me a pretty long time. So we want to make it like that, that long. And the reason you want this long is because it's going to go around each of them and then tie and then double knot. Or, I mean, not double knot, but make a loop. So you want it pretty long. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. Let's, let's do another row of this I-cord so I can show you again how to do it. Um, but then I'm going to go ahead and uh, make this off camera. So again, let's do another row here. We are on our third row, but it's really not that important to count the rows. It's more important to count the, the length. So we're going to pinch the base, get your crochet hook out, one, two, pinch those from the top, grab the tail end of the yarn, and then chain one, let go of one loop, get your crochet hook into that next loop, chain one, let go of the last loop, get your crochet hook into that last loop, and chain one. It'll start to look kind of funky, uh, but once you're done with it, it will really look really cool. It like, um, you can't really see it right now. It just doesn't look the same as, will it, as it will when it's finished. Let's do one more row of this. So we pinch the bottom two here, get your crochet hook out, pinch those two loops with this end of yarn. We want to chain one, let go, get your crochet hook into that next loop, yarn over and chain one, and into that last loop right here, yarn over and chain one. I really suggest you go very slowly when you're starting this out, um, because if you let go of one of those loops and it becomes and it comes out, it'll become very difficult to uh, get it back together. So really try to take it slowly and not accidentally let go of one of these loops and then it get pulled through and make it a real mess. Let's do one more. Okay, so I'm gonna pinch the bottom, let my crochet hook out, Pinch the top two, we're going to yarn over, chain one, let go of the next loop, get your crochet hook in there, yarn over, chain one, into the last loop right here, yarn over, and chain one. Okay, so I'm just going to keep continuing that over and over and over until I get about 50 inches, um, give or take. Uh, it doesn't need to be exact. The longer you go, um, the easier it will be to make that loop and make it look um, simple. But yeah, okay, well, let's let's keep hooking here. Okay, so I have finished um, crocheting our I cord to 50 inches. Um, I actually ended up going way further and I had to pull back uh, because I wasn't paying attention. But we have about 50 inches now and I put a little piece of yarn between the loops uh, to hold it into place so it doesn't come undone by accident before I pull it through and finish it completely. And the reason I did that is because I want to make certain that this is the size that I want um, before I cut the yarn and finish up this I-cord. So what we're going to do is we're going to add it to our bag and test it out. And then if we uh, feel like it's a good size, then we'll, we will um, knot it off and we'll hide the ends and tie it all together. But right now I want to show you how to add this I-cord to your bag um, one step at a time. So when you look at the top of your bag, um, you're going to see the two loops uh, from the front right here, the two holes rather, right above the star. You want to start by entering into this one and we're going to be weaving in and out all the way till we get back to the uh, 
a hole next to the one that we begun, began with. So we have two strings coming out of right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tail end of our I chord. Um, this is where we started. Uh, we haven't sewed this in yet. And we're going to start weaving this in and out of these holes. Now, the easiest way I found to do that is take your crochet hook from the inside and then yarn over with this tail end. And then you can just pull that through and pull the whole I chord through. So we can leave a little bit of an end. We want to assume that we'll have about this much left over in the end uh, once we pull it nice and tight. So we can keep going from there. We'll just keep taking this tail end and we'll start weaving it in and out. So I'm gonna pull it through and then pull the whole thing through. Before we sew in this end, this is probably the easier way to do it. We'll just keep doing that to make sure that it is to the length we want. And if it's not to the length we want, then we can, um, because we haven't cut and, and sewn in any of the ends yet, we can still add more length if we need to. We can actually take out our tail, or our um, stitch markers now as well. Go back to the very beginning here and just start pulling all those stitch markers out since we don't really need those anymore. Where's our tail end? Okay, so you can kind of see how it's going to be creating a, a little pull strap for us to close our our bell bag a little bit. And what's cool is I found out this bell bag is actually big enough to fit um, the bell bag that I was showing in the beginning of this video. You can actually fit that bell bag into this one. So we can have stacks on stacks or sacks on sacks. Sounds like a, a saxophone band, sacks on sacks. <laughs> okay. And I love the color. I did a little bit of a more maroon uh, color for our strap, which I thought was pretty nice. Okay, just a couple more here. And your last one should be coming out from the inside. Okay, so your last pull through with the strap should be coming from the inside out. Just like this. Okay, so you can see it's a pretty, we still have pretty long ends here. So what we're going to try doing is we're just going to try knotting, pulling these two ends in like that to close the top of the bell, and then we'll double knot it. Actually, before I even do that, I'm going to add stuffing to the inside of the bag just so that I can get an idea of what the bag will look like when I, if I have a lot of stuffing in it. It'll keep it uh, inflated a little bit and give us a better idea of what it will look like. So obviously we're going to need quite a lot of stuffing to fill this all the way up. So I'm just going to kind of fill it up and just to, just so we can get an idea of what it looks like when it's full. Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty full. I, I could fill it, I'll, like, I could probably double the amount of stuffing in there, to be honest, but that's probably good for right now. Now let's just pull it tight, like that. And then we can double knot these. Or not double knot them, but make a little knot, like that. And then we can do like a little loop knot, like this. And it looks like this is a pretty good size. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like that it's extra, extra long. The straps are extra long. But if you, if I wanted to, I could, I could make this a little bit shorter. Um, but I think I'm pretty happy with the, the length here. So what I'm gonna do now is we can cut this end. Okay, you don't need to leave very long of an end. So just about that long is just fine. And I'm going to get my crochet hook back into these loops 
um, that I have held together with this extra bit of string. So just get this loop out of there. And to finish this up, we're just gonna yarn over and pull through all of these loops to create a knot. And then um, I'm actually going to do one more. I'm going to chain one here at the end, just to really make sure it's knotted in. And pull it tight. And then I'm going to sew, let's hide these ends of the um, the I cord into back into the I cord so that we don't have these weird tail ends just sticking out. So to do that, I'm just basically going to be weaving it in and out of stitches. And I want to go pretty, pretty far up the cord, like that far up. That's pretty good. And then I'm actually going to go back down a few t as well just to really make sure it's locked into place and come back down through the bottom. Okay, this way it won't, it shouldn't come undone too much. And I'm gonna cut it right at the very end of it, like that. Okay, so there we go. We have the end of our I cord. And I'll go ahead, I'm gonna stretch it out a little bit so that end just gets kind of hidden into the I cord. And then we'll do that with the other end as well. So we'll just take this and we'll sew it into our piece to hide it in. So we just go, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can't really tell where it's gonna be sewn in to be honest. So I'm just gonna kind of weave it in and out and then go back down to the top. Oopsies. There we go. I'm just gonna weave back up and out the top. And then we can just stretch this. There we go. You can cut the end. And there we go. We have a finished giant bell bag let's make these loops a little bit bigger you want to make these equal if you can um i might untie it and equal it out a little bit more but yeah there we go we have our giant bell bag and this guy is big i mean like <laughs> seriously like i can fit here you can see this was our original one that i made with cotton yarn and this is our one we made with bulky yarn. I have another one I'm going to be making with even bulkier yarn, um, which is about the th thickness of this yarn that I use for the star, but for the entire piece. So it should be even bigger. My, I might even be able to double that size again. So it's like, like the size of both of these put together. Um, yeah, so there we go. If you like this video, uh, make sure to like it down below and subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, so you don't miss it when I come out with new videos. And if you want more Animal Crossing patterns, we have this pretty adorable Gulliver. Um, again, this is by Sir Pearl Grey. Uh, you can find this pattern at clubcrochet.com slash Gulliver. Or we also have, if I can find them, this mini, 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 itty bitty bell bag pattern. So we can have this little tiny bell bag in, I think, what if we had like a bunch of them in this giant bag? So we'll have just money on money on money. All right, we can finally pay off Mr. Nook. Thanks so much. We'll be coming out with more Animal Crossing patterns soon. Make sure to check that out by going to clubcrochet.com slash Animal Crossing. Special thanks again to Sir Pearl Gray for the pattern. Uh, it is great, and uh, I'm very, very happy with this. I'm excited to use this as a project bag to keep my yarn in and stuff. All right. Well, thanks again for watching. Pasta la pizza, and happy hooking. Bye. Cha-ching.